Amen. At this time, we'll dismiss the classes to their classes. Amen. I love you. I love Hallelujah. you, Hallelujah. I'm reading today from the book of Psalms 122. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Psalms 122. Amen. Thank you for being in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. I do feel confident that the Lord is here. Amen. Psalms 122. And we'll begin to read with verse number one. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Yes. Jerusalem is, is builded as a city that is compact together. Whether the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel, to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. For there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within thy walls and prosperity within thy palaces. For my brethren and companions' sake, I will now say, Peace be within thee. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. He said in the first verse, I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. In the last verse he said, Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Amen. And by the help of the Lord, I'd like to speak on this subject. Let's go to church. Let's go to church. Oh, hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord and ask him to speak to our hearts today. In the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost. I pray, O oh God, that as your word is anointed, that same anointing would flow through me. I know that you have spoken to me, and I pray, O oh God, that you would help me, that I would be used of you, hallelujah, in this place today. Hallelujah. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We will give you all honor and glory. Amen. And you may be seated. Thank you for standing in honor to the Word of God. A church as we, as, as, uh, as it is defined uh, by many, is the assembly of a group of believers, amen, that assemble at a, at a particular time, amen, for a particular purpose. In the word of church, the purpose of the church would be that we have gathered in his name to worship him. Whatever happens after that, amen, will, uh, will be a, a blessing of, of our gathering together in his name. I, I went back all the way to the book of Exodus when God had, uh, when God had, was getting ready to bring Israel out of Egypt, and he ordained, amen, a time for his people to gather together. It was not called church in that day. It was called oh, uh, two words. They were combined together, amen. It was called a holy convocation. And if you read through the books of Exodus, and uh, Leviticus and Numbers, you will find these words several times mentioned. A holy convocation. A holy convocation. That word intrigued me because I, uh, to be honest, I didn't know what it meant. And uh, it's good to say something, but you better know what you're saying. Uh, I've had some kids uh, through time that has said, hey, pastor, say this. And uh, whenever a, a child says that, and I don't know that child, if he's righteous or not, I refuse to say something that a child tells me because I got a feeling that they might be up to no good. I just, I'm sorry, but I don't trust them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amen. If somebody says to tell to say something in a foreign language, I uh, unless it's a preacher, and uh, and unless he says I I you know that I would not fool with you, uh, I'm probably not going to say it because I don't. I, I take I take speaking. 
uh, the word of God and, and what I speak, I believe that it's a very sacred thing and that I ought to honor God with the fruit of my lips. And, uh, and if somebody's going to tell me something that's a, a swear word in Spanish, I'm not going to say that. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying. So whenever I looked at it, so I, I see this word convocation. Well, I know it's a scripture word, but I want to know what it means. I know that it's holy. And, uh, and, and, I, and so I looked it up last night just to make sure that, I was, I, that it was what I thought that it was. And it said it was a gathering together to meet with God. It's a gathering together, and that is in the religious sense. It was a gathering together to meet with God. And in italics, the, the reference that I found, it said it is a rehearsal. And, and, uh, and I, and I kind of thought about that word, rehearsal. Uh, and when I thought about that word, I know what a rehearsal is. Uh, I remember whenever I was going to Bible college. In Bible college, I, I had to, in order to, in order to graduate, you had to have so many elective classes, and uh, and I had my core classes that I had to take, but I needed something to support. Uh, my grade and I needed an easy class to support my grade and so I took choir and chorale as classes and uh, that was an easy A so it would pull my GPA up you know what I'm saying and uh, and uh, if you if if you ever in college uh, think about it because it's a real easy A you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> And you might not have the best grade in the in your core class, but if you got it in that one, it'll kind of ease it off as far as your GPA. And uh, but uh, uh, I remember that uh, my first year in Bible college, I believe it was it took us about a month and a half to two months before the choir director ever let us. Uh, uh, actually, before the pastor let the uh, let the choir director bring the choir into the congregation and let us sing, because if we would have sung before that, it would have been a joyful noise and everybody got happy, but they wouldn't have been worshiping God, and uh, because we just didn't sound all that good. But uh, but it was rehearsal time. Rehearsal time never was all that fun of a time for me. Uh, my, my daughter and my wife are naturals when it comes to singing parts. I am not. And uh, I've had several people that have tried to teach me over the years. Uh, I love to sing, and I can hear a lead part, but if you try to put me in a bass or a tenor, sometimes it'll come, but sometimes it refuses to come to me. And when it doesn't, it doesn't sound too pretty. And, uh, and my daughter will say, no, that's not the way it goes, Daddy. Or my wife will say, no, it's this, and she'll hit a certain note. Oh, I hear that note, but I don't hear my part. And, uh, and so rehearsal to me, uh, we... I remember on one particular song, we would go over and over and over and over uh, that song trying to get it right because uh, we were going to be singing it in church. Now, I do remember one song that we rehearsed and we never did sing because the choir director said, uh, that you just butchering it too bad, and we had, we're not doing that one. He didn't say it, but he took us to a different song, one, and uh, we... You know, but uh, a rehearsal. The, the choir would have uh, the tenors and the basses on this side, and uh, and the altos and the sopranos on this side, and they would go through. Okay, sopranos, it's your turn, and they would sing through the part. Say la, and the ones on the in the alto section, they, this is your part, and they would sing their part, and they would get their part going. Okay, tenors, it's your turn, and so. Uh, at, in the choir, I was singing. I I was singing tenor. Uh, no, in the choir, I was singing bass. In the in the chorale, I was singing tenor. And okay, choir, it's your turn. It's the tenor part. 
And uh, our instructor was really something else. He'd come down, and, and I'd be standing, you know, about middle way over so that I wouldn't be in the way, and, and uh, we'd be trying our best to listen to it and sing it right. And he'd walk down that aisle, and he'd be listening to me or listening to the voice that wasn't quite getting it right. And, uh, and he'd come... And uh, next thing I know, he'd be grabbing me and saying, come with me. And he'd bring me over to stand beside a strong tenor, somebody that knew what they was doing. And, uh, and pretty much he'd get that old fella to put his mouth close to my ear so that I could hear what I was singing because I had a booming voice and I could and I could sing it but I just couldn't hear it and then boom there it would be and and uh, and then come chorale time it's time for everybody to take their parts and they get over to the bass part and when they get there here come that old choir director and uh, He'd be moseying back, and I knew where he was coming before he ever got back there. And sometimes I'd beat him to the draw, and I'd just go over and stand beside the fella he wanted me to stand beside because I knew this ain't working all the greatest. But I did get an A in the class, and that was rehearsal time. That was what a rehearsal was. We would sing the same words over and over again because we knew that there was coming a day when there would be a performance. And whenever, whenever we had rehearsed enough, things came out, and I'm, I'm bragging on the choir and not on myself, but they sounded tight. It was something else whenever we all got together singing and everybody was in harmony. I'll never forget whenever we were, and I've mentioned this before uh, in church, but we were in uh, Yosemite National Park and, uh, and as, a, as a college group, and, uh, and we were going from site to site, and we would take a little tour bus to get from one site to the next, and, uh, and there would be probably... Uh, we'd split up, and there'd be probably tw there were 20 of us, 25 of us on this tour bus with a bunch of other people that were on it. It pretty well full, but uh, one of the gals who was a music major, she, uh, major, she said, "I think it'd be a good idea if we sang today," and uh, and there were several of them that uh, could sing real good that said, "I think that'd be a good idea too." And, and I'll never forget this experience. I, 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 I hope I don't as long as I live because all of a sudden she got all of the different parts without a musical instrument. She got the pitch going and we started singing a portion of the Hallelujah Chorus. And I'm telling you, it sounded awesome in that bus. And when we all got off the bus, the rest of them that were on the bus gave us an ovation. You know, thank you very much. Not me, but them. They just kind of gave it all. And uh, I'll never forget how tight that that sounded, but it was because we had been in a rehearsal. And, and, and the writer said, I'm going to call it a holy convocation, a rehearsal. Now, I don't know if we understand, but we are, every time we come into the house of God, yes, we get things from God and we bless Him by praising Him, but really we are in a rehearsal because what we're doing down here is a reflection of what's going to happen when we step on the other side. And if we... Hallelujah. Get it right down here. That's our ticket to be in the performance on the other side. Oh, hallelujah. It's all, and, and he said it wasn't just a convocation because a convocation is the gathering of people together. It becomes holy 
when people gather together to seek God. It becomes holy when we try to get into the presence of God. It becomes a sacred place when God, hallelujah, is the thing that we're seeking. A convocation by itself can just mean it's a group of individuals getting together. For instance, to see a concert or to look at a play or to, uh, or to have a political convention. Amen. But when it's a holy convocation, amen, we're talking about gathering in the presence of God to see what God would do for us, to let the presence of the Lord, hallelujah, bless us. And David said, amen, referring back to a holy convocation, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I was glad for the privilege of being able to come into his house, amen, for a time of rehearsal because I know that anything is possible if I can get into the house of God. Hallelujah. Amen. From the book of Psalms, again I read in Psalms 15 and verse number 1. Amen. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle and who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. He doesn't backbite with his tongue, nor, nor does he evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his neighbor. He said, I'm going to tell you about this man that abides in your tabernacle and dwells in your holy hill. He's a man that's trying to do right. He's living upright. He's working righteousness. He's speaking the truth. He's staying away from the things that are bad. And that's the individual that is desiring, if you will, to abide in the tabernacle of the Lord. That's the person that's wanting to dwell in his holy hill. It seems as if it's a coincidence when a few chapters later, uh, a hundred, if you will, amen, in 121, where the psalmist would say these words, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made the heaven and the earth. Hallelujah. In other words, he was saying there's something about a set of hills, amen, that's greater than any other hills. I'm going to look unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, the, the one who made the heaven and the earth. It may not sound significant until we read in verse number 3 of chapter 24 where it said, Who shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? Hallelujah. And then we read from Psalms 48 where he said, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. In the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness, beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion by the sides of the north, the city of the great king. God is known in her palaces for a refuge. Hallelujah. So the psalmist was saying, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills that place where God dwells I'm going to look to the place hallelujah where the house of God is I'm going to look to the place hallelujah where God's glory is amen and so he said in that 122nd psalm I was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the Lord oh praise the Lord let's worship him I love you Lord Hallelujah. Amen. In the, in the ninth verse of that Psalms 48, he said, We have thought of thy loving kindness in the midst of thy temple. According to thy name, O God, so is thy praise in the ends of the earth. Thy hand is full, amen, of righteousness. Let Mount Zion rejoice. Let the daughters of Judah be glad because of thy judgments. 
He, he said, I'll tell you what I need you to do. I want you to walk about Zion. Amen. Get inside the church and start looking around. He said, there's some things in the church, amen, that are beautiful. It's a beautiful place. It's a place where God's glory is. Walk about Zion. Amen. So David was saying, let's go to church. Let's get in there. Amen. Because when we get in there, we begin to rehearse the good things of God. We begin to see things from a different light. Amen. God gives us encouragement and strength when we get into the church. I was glad, he said, when somebody said, let's go to church. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. He said, let Mount Zion rejoice. He said, he, he said, let the daughters of Judah be glad because of thy judgments. Walk about Zion. Go round about her and tell the towers thereof. Mark ye well her bulwarks and consider her palaces that you may tell it, amen, to the generation following. He said, when you're having church and, God's get, and God is blessing, don't you forget what God is doing for you and tell it to the next generation. Let them know that God, hallelujah, not only blessed in generations past, but he's blessed in this generation and to the generations that are to come hallelujah your blessing will be complete whenever you get the joy that comes in going to church oh hallelujah amen psalms amen 20 and verse number one gives us this statement Amen. Psalms 20 and verse number 1. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of, God, uh, of the God of Jacob defend thee. And send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. So he said, if you want God to hear you, amen, there's a place that you need to be looking to because he sends help from the sanctuary to strengthen thee out of Zion. Amen. In verse number 6 he said, Now know I that the Lord saveth his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. So he said, others have trusted in other things. They have trusted in the strength of man, in the skill of man, and in the strength of a horse. They've depended upon the things that are natural for their strength. They are depending upon things that they can see instead of the things that they cannot see. He said, but we will remember the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, our God. He said, we will remember the name of the Lord, our God. Amen. The reason that that's so important is because when you step over into Proverbs chapter number 18, amen, watch because I'm still talking about the church. Amen. In Proverbs 18 and verse number 10, it said, the name of the Lord is a strong tower the righteous run into it and are safe hallelujah so there is a place in the name of the Lord hallelujah when you run to this place in the name of the Lord there is a safety and there is a strength in the name of the Lord oh, hallelujah Oh, hallelujah. I, I, the reason that excites me is because whenever I read in 1 Kings chapter number 9 and verse number 3, the Lord said to Solomon, I have heard thy prayer and thy supplication, amen, that thou hast made before me. And I have hallowed this house. What house? The house of God. Amen. The temple. The place where God dwells. Church, if you will. He said, I have hallowed this house. Amen which thou hast built and I have put my name there forever oh praise the name of the Lord he said amen if you want to know where my name is get to my house that's where my name is oh hallelujah the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run in and are safe where are we going we're running to his house hallelujah and David said let's go to church Hallelujah. I know from experience whenever trouble has come my way and I did not have the answer, I know that there's been more than one time 
when nobody else has been in the sanctuary that have come to the house of God and I have found, hallelujah, <laughs> it was a good place to be in the sanctuary. There's something powerful about this place. And the psalmist, amen, he said, I've tapped into something and if you ask me, why don't we go to church? I'm going to say, I'm ready. It doesn't matter what day it is. It doesn't matter what time it is. I just like being in church because when I get there, things change for me. Oh, hallelujah. Psalms 23. You know the first part. Amen. But if you keep on quoting, you'll get down to that last part. You know the part about the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He maketh me. Amen. But in verse number 5, he said, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And then he said, And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know what he was saying? The reason that goodness and mercy are following me amen, is because I found the dwelling place. I found the place where God's at. And as long as I'm in his presence, as long as I'm in his house, goodness and mercy are showing up at his house. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. I step on the outside and I don't have the mercy the way that I do on the inside of the house. Oh, I'm glad that I can come to the house of God. Oh, hallelujah. You talk about a beautiful thing. I, I, I love it whenever somebody comes to the church and they've been a, and they've been a dirty, rotten heathen. And they, and they know they've been a heathen. I like it when the heathens come to think they're righteous. But I really like it whenever a heathen comes that is a heathen and knows he's a heathen. Because when they come into his presence and they feel his mercy for the first time, Man, those little tears start flowing down. And they say, oh, I've never been in a place like this. His mercy is here. I, I, I'm feeling something here that I never felt before. Hallelujah. Amen. What is it? Amen. It's what, it's what David was saying. Let's go to church. I was glad when they said, let's go into the house of the Lord. I read from the book of Psalms 27. In verse number one, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. He said, one thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. He in, and, 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 and lest I go too fast, I, I want to dwell there because I want to behold the beauty of the Lord. I'm coming into his house because you don't see beauty on, in the world like you'll see it whenever you come into his house and you see the glory of God. Oh, hallelujah. What was it Isaiah said in the year that King Uzziah died? I saw also the Lord high and lifted up in his train filled the temple. Hallelujah. He said, I saw glory. And when I saw glory and when I saw his beauty in that place, the angels were crying holy. He said, I realized how undone that I was. And Isaiah was a righteous man. But whenever he stepped into that holy place where God is, amen, suddenly he realized, amen, what little bit that I have is not it, nothing in comparison with what he has. Amen. But I don't read of Isaiah saying, let me get out of this place. He just said, I'm an unclean man. Uh, in other words, I'm enjoying what I'm feeling right now. Whenever, whenever, uh, whenever Moses, amen, saw that burning bush and went to see what was going on, I don't read of him when he realized it was the presence of God. I don't read of him saying, feet, do your thing. Let's get out of here as, as fast as we can. But he did take his shoes off and fall to the ground because he realized, I'm in the presence of God. There's something about being in the sanctuary. Amen. You get in the presence of God and you behold his beauty. His beauty is seen in the love, amen, that, uh, that we have one for another. It's seen in the forgiveness that we show one to another. And, 
Amen. It's shown in the way, in the ways that He dwells in our life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. I'm living in His house, so for in the time of trouble He shall hide me in His pavilion. In the secret of the tabernacle shall He hide me and He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. You know what he's saying? He's saying, I'm glad that I get, got to church. I was glad when somebody said, let's go to church. Psalms 43 and verse number, uh, verse number 3 makes this statement. Oh, send out thy light and thy truth and let them lead me. Let them bring me unto thy holy hill and to thy tabernacles. So David said, God, I need your truth and I need your light. And let them lead me because I know that your truth and your light when it leads me, it's going to lead me in the right direction. I know where it's going to take me. Amen. I might not know how to get to your hill. Amen. But your truth and your light knows how to get there. And if you'll send it my direction, your truth and your light will take me into the house of God. It will lead me to your hill and to thy tabernacles. And he said, when I step into the tabernacle, amen, then I will go unto the altar of of God unto God my exceeding joy yea upon the harp will I praise thee O God my soul hallelujah David said I have made up in my mind I'm going to praise him I'm going to go if I'm a long ways off and I don't know how to get there I'm depending on God to get me into his house because I am dependent amen I need to go to church hallelujah Psalm 61, amen, and verse number 1, amen, reads this way. Hear my cry, O God, and attend unto my prayer. Amen, from the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me, a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. Amen. I'm depending upon you, God. My heart is overwhelmed. Amen. And when I don't know where to go, lead me to the rock that's higher than I. Take me to the tabernacle. Lead me to the place that I can't go by myself. I want to get into his presence. Because if I get into his presence, my heart won't be overwhelmed. There's a comfort and a strength in the house of God. Let's go to church. Hallelujah. Amen. Psalm 73. Amen. And verse number 1 makes this statement, Truly the Lord is good to Israel, even as such are as of a clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. For I was envious at the wicked. When I saw the prosperity of the wicked, I saw what they were going through. And when I saw it, my feet well nigh slipped. I couldn't, I, I didn't have any understanding of what they, what they were going, I didn't understand why they were being so prosperous. And I listened to what they said according to verse number 11. And they say, how doth God know? And is there knowledge in the Most High? He said, all around me there's confusion when I look at the prosperity of the wicked. Hallelujah. But in verse number 17, David said, until I went into the sanctuary of the Lord. He said there's something about that house. When I got into his house and I saw their end, hallelujah, I saw that's not the way that I want to go. I want to be in his house. Hallelujah. For in his presence there is fullness of joy and at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The miracle, amen, that, that we read of in Zechariah where he speaks to Zerubbabel 
And he says, it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. The miracle that he performed, amen, was going to perform. And many prophets, not just one, but several prophets continually encouraged Zerubbabel in his task that seemed to be an impossible task. But the reason that God, amen, allowed it to be not by might nor by power, but by my spirit is because Zerubbabel said, i got to build him a house. I've got to put a place where we can where we can worship if we can build the house hallelujah where God can answer us amen then things will turn out our way we've been devastated we've been ruined because there's no house amen but if we can get the house built and if we can get people coming back then God's blessing begins to come back to us if we can build the amen the house of God amen and God said you can't do it by yourself Zerubbabel but I have a desire to have my house built as much as what you do hallelujah and it's not by your might and it's not by your power but the miracle will come by my spirit hallelujah so it wasn't Zerubbabel only that was saying let's go to church but God was saying come on let's go to that sanctuary oh hallelujah amen without us here amen in this place it's just a building. But whenever we gather together, it becomes the sanctuary. It becomes the church. Oh, I know there's something sacred about this place that, amen, when we gather together or whenever I come as an individual by myself and I begin to pray, amen, this place is dedicated. I, I, don't, I don't want to d deny that. But by itself, this building is really nothing. But when, it, when somebody comes in to this house, oh, hallelujah, there's something that happens because he comes in. And that's what David was trying to plug in. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. He was saying, the reason that it's such a great place is because when we get there, amen, God's already shown up. And whenever he shows up, anything is possible. Oh, hallelujah. I, I, I want to take us just for a couple of minutes, and I, and I apologize that we've taken a little bit of time, but amen. When Jesus spoke in Matthew 18 and verse, number, and verse number 19, when he said, And again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Amen. He said, it just takes two of you to agree as touching anything, hallelujah, that you're asking for. If you'll agree, hallelujah, amen, just two of you. Amen. All it would take is Brother Robertson and I. Amen. All it would take is Brother Jeff and I. All it would take, amen, is Sister Jessica, amen, and Sister Brenda. All it would take is just two, Sister Robertson, Sister Marcia, Sister Anna. All it would take, amen, is Sister Anna and Sister Bollinger. All it would take is just two of you, amen. And if two of you would agree, amen, anything is possible. But if two or three would agree, hallelujah, amen, if two or or three would gather in my name. Oh, hallelujah. There am I in the midst of them. Amen. He said, it don't matter, amen, if there's a whole group of people or if it's just two or three of you. If there's two of you, you can have church because I'll show up. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. He started his earthly ministry after leaving the wilderness. Luke chapter 4 said he, as his custom was, he went into the synagogue and opened up the book and began to read. It was his custom, Jesus Christ's custom, that, you know, every time the, the synagogue's doors were open, I'll be there to read. This is my custom. This is something that I should do. We've talked about it before, but the reason that he was baptized wasn't because he had sinned, but it was, a, it was something that he did as a pattern to show us that baptism was important. 
Amen. He didn't have to be baptized for his sin. He was telling us that's what's important to do. The reason that he went to the synagogue, amen, wasn't because, amen, he, he just needed to get there, but he was wanting to show us it's important to be in the synagogue. It's important to be in the house of God. It's important to be in that place. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go, amen, and, into the house of God. Amen. And then, and then you notice where one of his first where one of his first corrections came. He walked into the temple and he said, I see a bunch of money changers. I see people that have changed the direction, amen, of what the temple was made for. And he began to overturn money changers' tables, amen, and said, get out of here. My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves, amen. And, uh, and, and what a day that that was. That was at the beginning of his earthly ministry, amen. What was he doing, amen, in the temple on the day, or where was he? rather. Amen. I'll tell you where he was at. He was in the temple on the day when the woman of adultery was brought to him. Amen. Was that coincidence? No, I believe that. Amen. God was saying, I'm going to show you what the house is about. Hallelujah. Bring a lady that's been caught in the act of adultery and I can show you that in the temple, hallelujah, is where grace can be shown. And she would say, I have no, no one to condemn me. And he said, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. It was in the temple that that all started. It was in the temple at the ending, amen, at the closing of his earthly ministry. Again, he drove out the money changers, amen, out of the temple. And whenever he had finished, the Bible said that he didn't stop there. But he said, he said, let the blind and the lame come. And they began to come. And there was healing that happened. He drove out the distractions that, amen, that would keep the thing that the temple was made for, amen, from happening. He got rid of that. And when he did, the blind and the lame came to him. And he healed them in the temple. I wonder if one of those blind men, after he had got healed of his blindness on that day, wouldn't have quoted for a few times. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Tell me the lame man, amen, that hadn't been set at the gate, that had been set at the gate beautiful, and, and Peter and John said, silver and gold have I none, that that wasn't a verse that he liked. Let us go into the house of the Lord. I'm glad for the day, amen, that I went into God's house. I'm glad that I got to his church. Even from Calvary, amen, he, his spirit made a visitation into the temple. For it was in that time that the, that the veil was rent in twain. And there was an opening so that there could be, hallelujah, access by everybody into the place where the mercy seat was. And why anybody wouldn't want to go to church would be confusing to me. But because whenever Jesus, uh, whenever Jesus was resurrected, the first thing, the, the last thing he said before he ascended was, you go to Jerusalem and you tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. And being assembled together, they all joined together waiting for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of me. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Amen. There was a holy convocation. It was joining together. They were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. Oh, hallelujah. See, whenever you decide to make a holy convocation, it isn't going to be long before God lets his presence be felt. I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm telling you, whenever we decide, I've come to seek God, God shows up. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. If I will seek him, amen, I, he'll be found of me. Hallelujah. I, I, and so... So he said, you go to Jerusalem and tarry. He commanded his disciples. And then, and then as I read the final deal, and they continued daily in the temple. They didn't stop going to church. I mean, we're talking apostles, folks that have been walking with Jesus for three and a half years. And, and they said, you know what? 
it's important that I get to the house of God again today. Uh, and now, I, I'm, I'm wondering if maybe they didn't understand that this is a rehearsal place. This is a place where I'm rehearsing. I'm, I'm getting ready for that main event. There's getting ready to be, amen, something that's greater than our eyes have ever seen and our ears have ever heard. And it's going to come to those that have that spirit of David that said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. You know, the world, the world says, why do you spend so much time in church? And yet they'll get season tickets to the football game. The world will say, you're wasting time. But every time the DSO plays a symphony and they play the same blooming songs over and over again. And next week, by the help of the Lord, I'll take my wife and I'll hear it again. But they'll, they'll have played the same things that they played the last time. But I'm going because she likes it. And they say, and there'll be folks, I promise you, they came out of the nursing home to listen to it. They dropped some big bucks, those front row seats, where I can't get. <laughs> we're going to get the nosebleeds, you know. <laughs> but we're there. <laughs> and uh, and uh, if I don't pinch myself, I might go to sleep during part of it. And folks pay big money to hear something that they heard last year. And they can pick up at any store and, and, and play it. Or they can go to YouTube and they can watch somebody, some great symphony. But they're in the auditorium with this group of folks that know how to play a violin. And they look at the church and they say, I don't know why in the world you'd do that. Oh, yes. And to the world, I say, you may not comprehend it. But when I came to church today, I didn't feel like being there. But when I got there, I felt the presence of God. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. I, the reason that I like going to church is you ain't never felt mercy at your concert. You ain't never felt forgiveness at a football game. You ain't never felt God's glory. Hallelujah. Watching a play. But when I got into the house of God, amen, there's strength in his house. There's power in his house. There's glory in his house. Everything that I need. I had a meeting with the almighty God. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I thank God for a time that we can go to church. Oh, hallelujah. I've watched too many miracles to say that church is not important. I've been too many times whenever I've had a need. Amen. And not knowing where my answer was coming from. And listen, as a preacher would begin to preach, and it looked like he, he had been going home with me for me not to know the church is, the church is important. I, I know that it's important. Been too many times that I've that I have come not really even feeling like I needed to be there. Amen. Or that I could get there and I've got there and oh what a blessing. I've watched some tremendous miracles take place in church. I have watched some tremendous miracles take place in church. I've watched lives that have been broken by sin healed. I have watched families brought back together because of the miracle of church. I've watched alcoholism be delivered. I've watched drug addiction be delivered. I've seen cancers be healed. I've seen eyes of the blind open. 
I've seen some phenomenal things happen. I've watched folks filled with the Holy Ghost at church. I've watched people be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of their sins. It all happened at church. Man, I never forget one time, I was about 18 years old, in the, and uh, 18, 19, Daddy was starting the church in Williston. I reckon I was 18. And, uh, and there was a rally down in, uh, down about 50 miles away, 60 miles away from where Daddy was starting the church in, in uh, Williston. And uh, one of the men that, uh, that was going to church decided to come to that rally that night. And I remember, amen, as his hands were raised. And uh, there was a tenseness on his face. And all of a sudden, God's glory came down. And his, his countenance changed, and the biggest old smile came on, uh, uh, upon his face, and he began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. I think that's the first time that I, that I ever shouted in the presence of God. It wasn't for me, but it was for him, because I had seen what God could do. I've watched, uh, I've watched pastor and pastor's wives who are in church constantly come to a camp meeting. I remember Brother Fennell in, in North Dakota, he would come to the camp and I don't know if there was ever a year whenever one night he wouldn't get snockered in the Holy Ghost. So drunk that he couldn't speak in English and for the rest of the night he would speak in tongues and he'd have to point to the menu and say, <laughs> and they'd say, do you want this? And he'd say, yeah, because he couldn't speak in English. But the trial that they had gone through had brought him to a point that he said, my answer can only come in church. And you'd watch him come to the altar at the end of every service. And he's not the preacher. He's coming because he had learned a key. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. There's something powerful about this house. It's not that my grandfather built it, but this is the house of God. And this is the gateway to heaven. And this is the place where God's presence is felt. And this is where every need can be met. Oh, hallelujah. Let's stand together tonight, today and let's worship him. God is in the sanctuary right now. Hallelujah. The presence of the Lord is here.